Today I'm going to show you all the steps to build a medium size 24 volt DIY off grid solar setup. Let me give you a little bit of a backstory. I recently pulled my 4000 watt split phase inverter out of my main system because I've replaced it with something else. So I'm going to show you how to wire up that and all the components that it's going to take. You're going to need a disconnect, charge controller, and a battery. Now I'm going to use this 24 volt Dynas battery. Now if you aren't familiar with Dynas, they are a leader in the home storage solution market. They've recently got into these size batteries. I've used a few of them. I really like their batteries, so it was a no-brainer to use this battery. It has become my favorite 24 volt battery by far. I did a capacity test on this, blew through the capacity test just like the 12 volt batteries did. So I really, really like this battery. Uh, real quick, I'll go over the, the numbers on it. You can do 100 amps charging and discharging. It of course has 2,560 watts of capacity or energy, which um, again, I did test. It's a really nice battery. So this is gonna be the core of our build. Again, I'm gonna go over all the steps. So hang out. If you wanna learn how to do a DIY medium size build, you're in the right place. So this is my potting shed. Right now, there's not much in it other than some storage. But what I want to do is I want to put this in here, wire it up so I can bring in some refrigeration and even some freezers so we can use it to uh, hold some more food. Also, you see that chicken coop right there. I want to be able to have a way to heat their water if needed in the wintertime. So I think this system is going to be perfect for it because I can expand it as my future needs grow because it is a medium sized system. It's a good sized system. So let's get into this. So as I'm sure most of you can relate with over the years, this potting shed has actually just become more of a storage shed and has gathered dirt and stuff that I don't even know what it is now. I see some old solar panels, so at least I know what those are. You are going to have to forgive the light because, of course, there is no electricity in here. Fortunately, the people that owned this place before I bought it did wire it, so there are outlets and an overhead light and a switch. So when I'm done installing this system, I can just plug it in and be good to go. So that's kind of cool. Now, this is all the components I'm going to need, but I'm also going to need some wire, cable, circuit breakers, fuses, bus bar, stuff like that. And I'll show you how to wire all of that up as well. It's very, very simple. Now, I think you're going to find that this project um, is doable for the average person. So if you have a building or a cabin if on your property or somewhere in the middle of the mountains and you want to have a small system to have some electricity, I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised with how easy it is to do. So next thing, I'm going to wire it all up. I'll get this thing going. I got the door open right now so the chickens are coming in. I think they think that this is a new chicken coop for them. I'm actually going to have to shut this door because they are now doing tree trimming across the street and it's kind of loud. So let me shut this real quick. Come on chickens. Now I did add some temporary lighting in here so we can see a little bit, but it's still going to be relatively dark. So I do apologize for that and I apologize for the noise outside. So the first step you got to mount all your gear. This is very simple. You just screw it onto the wall or wherever you're going to put it. But the trick is, is the placement. You want to make sure you put things in a place that makes sense. So this is the battery icon. You want to make sure the wires go to the battery. This is for the solar. You want to make sure the solar is here so you're not crossing everything. So even though it's relatively straightforward to mount, the planning of everything is critical because it's going to save you a lot of headache if you plan properly. If you're not paying attention, you're just gonna create a really sloppy nightmare of a setup. So that's what we're gonna do first, to mount everything up. Now these low frequency inverters weigh a ton, so if you can find someone that will help you, it'll make it a lot easier. Now I also like to put support underneath, because these things are so heavy. Now 
that'll just make it nice and secure. So next I'm gonna mount my charge controller. If you look on the back though, this is a big heat sink. These things can get hot, so it's best if you can mount them away from the wall. Uh, sometimes I use a little nut. You can use these. These are actually off of a different inverter. But um, the trick is just to get them off the wall a little bit so you can get as much airflow as you can. Now for the DC isolator switch. What this does is lets me turn on and off the solar panels. So the solar energy comes up here, then it'll go out into this icon here. It'll be two wires, plus and minus. So you can see there's two holes. So I could do two arrays. So in the future, I could add a second charge controller and run another line up. So when I install it, it's gonna take the lid off. Make sure you don't turn this knob with the lid off. It won't line back up. And I'm gonna mount this, these holes right there. Now I'm going to install a terminal fuse. This will fuse my battery from the rest of the system. Now I'm using a 125 amp fuse that will allow up to 3000 watts through my system. But I have a 4000 watt inverter. But um, I don't really care because my load is never going to be more than 3000. In fact, I doubt that it's ever more than 2000 in this room. But just make sure you size it according to your needs. I like these terminal fuses because they're simple to install. They go right on the terminal, and that's it. The next thing is I'm going to install this. This is a circuit breaker. This is good for up to 48 volts. This is a 24 volt system. That's no problem. This is a 40 amp. Let me go back up here. This is a 40 amp charge controller. So I'm using a 50 amp circuit breaker. Now I'm really using this more as just an isolator, so I could just put in a isolation switch similar to this for here, because I'm really not too worried about an overcurrent event. But that'll go right about here, and that will allow me to turn this off. So I can turn off the solar, and I can turn off the charge controller. When you're putting these in, make sure you do not use an impact driver. This plastic is very, very delicate, and uh, I have broken plenty of these, so I know from experience, do not overdrive them. The wiring is surprisingly easy. What we're going to do is we're just going to put a wire down in here. This is our positive. And then we're just going to go into the positive there. Now, if you notice on this end, I have a ferrule. You can use these if you like because the stranded, sometimes it's better to use a ferrule. Um, either way will work, really personal preference. Just put it in there. And then there's a little Phillips. You screw it down. There's a little gate in there. You just put it in the gate, screw it down. And then there's a similar gate here. Use a smaller screwdriver for this one. You just turn the gate counterclockwise to open it. Make sure you go in the positive because we're doing positive. Red's positive. And it goes in and then you turn it clockwise. And then we'll just do the same on the negative. Now the bottom side is a little different. We're going to be wiring MC4 connectors. So we're going to put these in here, and this is where the solar panels will be connected. Now again, you notice one is a ferrule, one is not. I'm reusing wire. That's why I have some that ferrule, some that don't. Again, do whatever you like. Some people love these. Some people don't like them. The trick here, you want to make sure your red goes to red, your black goes to black. Do not crisscross these. You will be in a world of hurt. Tighten down the gate. Give it a little pull to make sure it's snug. Now we can put the lid back on. 
Remember, do not move this when it's open. It will close, but it will not line. If you notice it's off and clearly we don't have solar panels hooked up and I'm mentioning that because you want to make sure your battery is wired before you hook up solar panels. Always hook up solar panels last. Now we're going to wire from the battery to our switch. The switch is going to have the positive. Get that in that gate. Close it down. Now I'm just going to hand tighten this for now. I will tighten that down later when I tighten everything for real. Now I'm going to do the negative. Now you could install a bus bar. This bus bar is actually a little too small because it's 100 amps. You could install a bus bar, but because this is so small, I'm just going to wire everything up directly to the battery because we don't have a lot of things to wire. So now I'm going to wire from the negative of the inverter to the negative of the battery. And you will quickly understand why that charge controller negative was temporary. If I can get this threaded on. So I'm going to take this off. So you always want to put big wires first, little wires on top. Also make sure you properly size your wires. This is a two gauge wire which can do well over 100 amps. This is going to be much more than I'll ever need because that can do 100 times 24. You know that's 2400 watts. So again I'm never going to run that much power through my system. But if you were going to run a large amount of power through it you could bump up to this which is a 2 aught. This is 2 gauge this is too odd. So this one will handle a lot more current. So always properly size your wire. Next up, I'm going to wire from my positive circuit breaker to the battery. I'm using two gauge wire, which is way more than I need to use, but it's what I have lying around. You can always use bigger wire. The only downside is bigger wire is going to be expensive, but bigger wire is always perfectly fine to use. If you also notice, I have this off just so the circuit is not completed. So now I'm going to do my final wire. I happen to have this 2 watt cable line around. That's why I'm using this one. But remember, this is the larger one, so this goes on the bottom. Even though this is 2 gauge, this is still bigger. So I'm just going to turn this and we're going to connect. Now this is disconnected. So this is still separate, but when I connect this to this, the battery and this will be live. So you can get a spark if you haven't pre-charged your inverter. Now this might be obvious, but another thing to remember is connect your wires <laughs> to your fuse. Don't connect them to your terminal. It's not going to do any good if you do that. The wiring is done. Now we're going to mount these remotes. Now I'm going to mount this here just so you can see it, but you would obviously mount this somewhere that made sense. It's very simple. Just plug it in. And then the same with the charge controller. It has a remote. Same thing with that. Just plug it in. And just like the other remote, you would put it somewhere that makes sense. I'm, again, just putting it here just so you can see it. So now I'm going to turn the circuit breaker to the charge controller. You can see. And again, you'd mount this somewhere that makes sense. This will show you everything you want to know. The solar panels are still off because we haven't hooked them up yet, but this will tell you everything you want to know about the battery and the charging. Next is this. We're going to turn our inverter on. 
And you can see there's nothing going on right now because we have nothing plugged into it. Now I'm going to plug in a load and plug in the solar panels, and <laughs> that'll be a complete system. And now for the final few steps. Inverter is running. My load is plugged in, so I'm going to turn the light switch on. We have light. Here are my solar panels. Using Call Sun solar panels, which are the greatest solar panels in the world. You can see as I plug this in, you see now there's a solar icon. It's late in the day. There's not a lot of solar energy, but that's it. We have solar energy coming in. We have a load going out. We have built a complete 24 volt medium size off grid system. It's very, very simple to do. You can see we use very minimal tools. It's not very difficult to do at all. Anybody could do this. If anybody has any questions about anything you saw, if you built the system of your own, love to hear your story. As always, like, comment, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to everyone soon.